Hey guys, my name is Raphael and today I'm presenting you my Unity Asset Store asset, Mesh Brush. Mesh Brush basically allows you to paint game objects onto your game object's surfaces, which may or may not sound weird to you right now, but it actually turns out to be very useful in my opinion, since both UDK and CryEngine have this feature. Or, well, no, I'm not so sure about CryEngine, but I am sure UDK actually lets you paint stuff onto your stuff. This is very useful for quickly detailing and decorating nature terrain scenes like this one, but it can be used for, well, anything actually. So let's get started. Oh, uh, by the way, this isn't actually my scene, and those aren't my assets either. They come with the nature pack from the asset store. Anyway, let's get started. First, select the game object on top of which we want to paint meshes on, and go to game object and click on paint meshes and select game object. Now here we see the inspector of mesh brush and as we hover our, um, our mouse over our game object we can already see our circle brush appear on the surface. Uh, you can increase or decrease your circle brush's radius by pressing or holding the I and O key on your keyboard like this. Or you can tweak the setting in the inspector view manually. Now, let's add in some meshes to paint into our set of meshes to paint. Um, uh, let's, let's search for fern. Yeah. Oh, yeah, plain and simple. I love primitive vegetation. <laughs> okay, now we can <laughs> press P on our keyboard and it'll paint our mesh. And as you can see, the me the meshes we paint adapt themselves to the surface of our game object. But this is really plain, and still very boring in my opinion, so let's add some variation to it, shall we? So go down here and press delete all painted meshes. This will delete everything you've painted so far. Uh, this can be undone, so don't worry if you accidentally press this. Nothing happens at all. You can undo this with Ctrl Z. Uh, the only thing you can't undo is actually combining meshes, but we'll get to that later. Um, so let's add this variation I was talking about. Uh, here we can offset our painted meshes, and this is useful if you have problems with vegetation floating above your geometry or stuck inside it which is obviously not what we want, but if you, generally if you place your pivot points carefully you wouldn't need this. So let's set this to zero and uh, we can either scale uniformly or non-uniformly and within a custom defined range or not. So let's say we want to paint our fern in a custom r defined range here and uniformly on all three x, y, z axes. So we would put in something like, I don't know, minimum half the size and maximum twice the size. This will uh, tell MeshBrush to randomly scale our fern within the minimum and maximum range of half and double the size. And as you can see, it spawns them randomly either half or double the size within that range, sorry. So let's delete this and this is still, those are very big meshes. So what we can do is we can apply an additive scale. This setting gets applied after all other settings and randomizers have been applied. So this is very useful if you want to change the size of your painted meshes additively without actually changing any of the prefab game objects. So we can set this to minus 0.5. You can you cannot go lower than not uh, minus 0.9 because that would invert your scale which gives uh, rather uncomfortable and odd results which I try to forget. I still dream about those kind of things. <laughs> so as you can see now the additive scale is being applied after the meshes have been randomized and this gener gives already a pretty nice result in my opinion. But this is still not what I was looking for, so 
let's actually change object and go to this weird sphere over here and click on it and add the game object mesh brush instance and oh yeah um I almost forgot you you have to have a collider on your object on which you want to paint meshes on and you can only have one collider on your game object on top of which you want to paint meshes so if you have multiple colliders it won't work mesh brush will just ignore all of them except the first one you added so you can if you have none attached you can either choose to um put a mesh collider on it yes please now or say no thanks and add uh, one manually and that's what I'm gonna do because uh, um, a sphere collider is more healthy to unity as far as I know because the mesh collider has, has plenty of triangles and the sphere collider is a built-in interpolating stuff I really don't know the maths behind this but I, as far as I know this is better for performance reasons and now we can add the mesh brush instance to our sphere now let's make this even more interesting let's increase the size of the array of meshes to paint to something like yeah let's say two and pick the fern from before and uh, maybe some um, grass yeah weed <laughs> And uh, yeah, this toggle here, um, well, it does what it says. You can automatically flag your meshes as static, and this will, uh, from the beginning on, flag all the stuff you paint as uh, as static. Uh, if you don't know what static means, you you can look it up in the Unity documentation. Uh, I really recommend doing so if you don't know what this is. Is uh, basically it just batches together your draw calls as long as your painted meshes share the same material then set the number of meshes to something like five or no six and as you can see the scattering slider appeared uh, the scattering amount defines the percentage of how much our meshes get randomly scattered away from the uh, from the center of our circle brush um, so a value of zero for instance would stupidly paint all our meshes into the center of our brush which would spam them all together into one big pile of meshes which uh, well just uh, usually just leave this mm, to a value from like 50 to 100 but you never know you, you can adjust this as you want but usually I use a scattering amount of 50 to 100 which makes it look more interesting anyway so that's that and Let's randomize our stuff up a bit. Let's have some random scale here, like something like 0.83. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. And I'd say minus 0.2. And let's see what this. Oh, and increase the radius. This would have given a horrible result. Oh, and here is a per here is a perfect example of where the color handle value comes in very handy since you can see white on white very good right so <laughs> you can set this to any color you want I'll set this to red and oh yeah look at this and let's paint and as you can see we're painting multiple meshes at once and let's say you don't want to press P every time you paint but something more like you hold your button and drag and stroke your stuff in dynamically. Uh, you can do this. Uh, let's just delete this stuff and uh, for this we use the delay parameter. The delay uh, is the time in seconds between uh, the brush strokes. So uh, with this default value if I press and hold the P button on my keyboard it'll paint meshes every quarter second. Um, so let's delete this and if I set this to 1 we'll slowly paint meshes every second. So see one, 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 one. Um, but if I set this to 0 0.05 this will horribly spam my my meshes onto oh god please why did I do this? <laughs> um, so I'd say I'll leave this at 0.25 and these two buttons here will reset everything so if you mess up you just reset them back to the default values and you'll get your standard paint again 
Um, now about scene optimization. Um, this button here will flag all the meshes you've painted so far as static. So let's say we didn't have this on and we painted our meshes and these are currently causing a lot of draw calls. We can flag all of them as static at once by pressing this and then as we go into our hierarchy hierarchy, sorry, English is not my native language uh, you can see all of them has been marked as static which is quite nice and this will actually batch together as good as it can every mesh sharing the same material but it still isn't enough so if you're done painting meshes in an area of your scene just make sure you combine them with the combine painted meshes button this will combine all the meshes together into one single big uh, mesh uh, per material used so in this case it would generate two meshes because we used fern and grass so we combine them and as you can see we have one big mesh for grass and one for the ferns and this will optimize your scene a lot uh, but make sure you you really only combine meshes of a single area otherwise you you can get really bad um, occlusion calling as far as you have that feature with Unity Pro and what you also have to keep in mind is you can um, everything all of these settings here can be undone except the combining if you combine your meshes this cannot be undone so you also cannot delete all dependent meshes so this is an intentional behavior because this way once you're done painting objects in your area in your current area of your scene you can combine them and move on to another area of your scene and paint objects and meshes and you can also keep your scenes very organized this way you can name your meshes like area one something like that area one grass area one ferns and then move on and, and paint other stuff in it additively later on uh, this will create a new parent object which has the mesh brush parent script which is used for parenting the meshes correctly you can also delete it manually it is no problem at all you can organize it as you want now let me show you what multiple mesh painting is uh, let's add another mesh brush instance to our game object and this will add well another mesh brush instance and as you can see now we have two circle brushes here appearing on our surface this is a very very powerful feature and if you mess around with each of these settings see what they do and create your brushes in a smart way you can really really save yourself a lot of development time for your scenes instead of manually placing in your mesh scale and then rotating it oh oh god that's hell uh, but with this you can actually really speed up your development very very uh, much <laughs> uh, for instance here in the smaller radius we're gonna add in a fern and we're gonna randomly rotate it and uniformly scale it always whoops <laughs> not 0.75 as minimum uniform scale and 1.25 and in the red area we're gonna add in two types of grass like yes this one is awesome automatically flag a static and yeah I'd say a random scale something like something smaller than the fern randomly rotate and now as you can see oh wait oh no that's correct we're painting one fern and six grass meshes per paint stroke so uh, now as you can see as I paint over the stuff onto my sphere we always paint one fern at a time and six grass meshes onto the surface of our game object as I said this feature is very very powerful and can be used for multiple mesh painting you can add uh, as many as these instances as you want you can unfold and fold them and really define as many sets of meshes to paint as you want um, this also keeps your inspector view very organized and you can
really have all the power you want of mesh brush. Now what you also can do anyway is you can also use mesh brush to paint onto your terrains. Uh, this uh, let me show you this actually. L let's paint some rocks here around this boring tree here. Um, oh, already did this, sorry. And add a mesh brush instance to our terrain. Enter game object menu. Blah blah blah. <laughs> and add some rocks. Well, those are larger rocks than what I was looking for. Let's search for our nature pack. Awesome package. I think I already mentioned that. Stones group here. Prefabs. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. Let's increase the array. And add in those two stone groups. Then, increase our radius. Um, maybe paint them slowly so we see what we're, what we're doing. Then, let's put in a random scale of something like 0.8 and 1.15. That was a hard time deciding. <laughs> and then randomly rotate it. And then, oh yeah, more radius please. And now we can paint our rocks around our tree with ease. No manual, oh god, what have I done? <laughs> with ease and really really smartly and quickly detail our scenes with this. So we can also shrink it down a little bit. Whoops. Some detailed rocks here. Then afterwards you can still delete them manually. That's no problem. You can do whatever you want. So guys that's it. I'm I'm actually very proud and happy with what I've created here. I I hope you find it just as useful as I do and I hope you like my tool and that it turns out to be really useful for you. And thanks for watching.